Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast, episode number 224. And coming up on this one, it was free agent frenzy the other day. What an absolute wild day. The Leafs went and they signed Domi. They extended Wall. They signed Lilligren. And they went and got Tanev, Ekman Larson, Stolars. I mean, we're going to talk about it all. But they got another special guest that Dale really wants to get into. Are they done? We don't know. We'll look ahead to the offseason, see what they might do next. All this and more in 224 of the Tip in podcast. Did Tree Living and the Leafs do enough to improve the team in free agency? We're going to give you our thoughts and break it all down right after this. Let's hit the intro. Really disappointing going forward here in the offseason as to A, what players will be back, what kind of changes there may be, but really disappointing that the Maple Leafs are going home. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. So uh, Dale, how was your free agent frenzy day? We looking all good here, Chatty? Yeah, you look good, man. Okay, thumbs up. Just wanted to go, uh, just go there quick. Well, I'll tell you right now. July 1st, we're doing this a couple of days after. Let the smoke clear a little bit and yeah. uh, have some, you know, initial thoughts are a little different a couple of days later than the initial thoughts. Um, but I'll tell you right now the absolute best part about, okay, first of all, Sportsnet compared to TSN, it is what the hell has happened to Sportsnet, man? TSN knows how to do a hockey show. Sportsnet just declining 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 year after year do you not agree like those two products are not even comparable yeah yeah it's I, not I, even- I, I, it, tsn's always been better at the hockey i think sportsnet does an overall better job at other sports but every hockey- single one of the top guys in the industry works for tsn every single one of them i know yeah um, just everything they just cover hockey way better they do, but the absolute best part about the entire day for me, Chatty, Lindsay Hamilton, part of the broadcast, her and Cheryl Pounder, but specifically Lindsay Hamilton, my favorite part of the day. <sighs> Biggest surprise of the day. Last podcast, you got up and left your chair when I said, don't you worry. We got Matt Murray right around the corner. He's coming down the pike. You're like, get the hell out of here. No way. I was completely joking, but. What do you know? <laughs> what do you know? I know. They bring Murdoch back as the third string goalie. Can you believe it, Chad? I can't believe it. I mean, I, I get the idea, right? Like you got Wall and Stolar, so you got you got two guys who are kind of unproven. They played 100 and change in the NHL games. I thought maybe you bring back like a Martin Jones, like somebody who's actually played yeah. a little bit the last few years to be yeah. that third guy to save your ass in case things happen. But nope. they're going with Murray. They're bringing they're the groin. Murdoch. They're bringing the golden groin. The golden groin back as a third stringer. And I guarantee you this. We'll get into the goalies a little bit later, but with the combination. <laughs> he, won't, he won't play one minute. <laughs> no, absolutely opposite of that. With the history of Wall's injury, and we don't know for sure what we're getting out of Stolars, I guarantee you Matt Murray gets game action with the Leafs this year, just like, uh, what's his name last year? Who You just said him. Martin oh, Jones. Jones. I guarantee you. A hundred percent. Remember the year, a few years ago when like Hutchinson, <laughs> Hutch was still in this, yes. like they read, they rebrought Hutch back. We're like, what are they doing as a third stringer? We're, and we said the same thing. We're like, I guarantee you Hutch is not, he will get game action. And sure enough, he did. Murray will get game action for the Leafs. And I can't wait to see it over under before Christmas is the question. But maybe we'll get into that. Yeah, another, another well, you know time. what? Murdoch at 850,000 is a, oh, sure. a lot better than five and a half million. If he's healthy, who knows? Who knows, yeah. man? Because, like, we need, like, we'll get into the goalies, but yeah. uh, so uh, like, I guess I'd say this off the top here, Chad. Like, oh, did Tree Living ever have a massive, full on boner for Tanov? <laughs> for oh, my agency? god, or what? Like, how horned up was Tree Living? For Tanev makes yeah. the trade at the draft, 
to bring him like to he have couldn't, the he couldn't wait he could not he could wait. wait he had to give away draft picks just to get him just to get him like in the room immediately uh speaking but he of got horned his up. guy speaking of horned up this is when i should have brought up lindsey hamilton i jumped the gun on that one but anyway I can't believe how horned up tree was over Tanif. Like I've never seen anything like it. He was like, I'm getting this guy. It doesn't matter the term. It doesn't matter what it's going to be like, whatever, six years. It's crazy. Um, Okay. So I'm back and forth here. I'm a little on the fence. There's some things I like. There's some things I don't. I do like the way tree is going here. Like I like the direction it's trending. Yeah. But it's not enough. It's not enough. I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I don't think I think there's there's nothing new to this like yeah you can be like oh look at the size of our defense now it's big but you're tinkering around the edges and you did nothing to shake up the core four of the team and we've said that how many we've said that for the last four or five years tinker around the edges all you want until you change the actual substance the DNA of this team I don't think it really does anything I love the like I love the defense now I really like Tanev I think Ekman Larson might, you know, if he plays like he did in the playoffs, might be yep. a pickup. The uh, Hakapan, I mean, if he's not injured, this yeah. guy's a fucking beast. But at the same time, it's the same <clears throat> team up front. And and then with with Stolars as well, bringing back Domi, bringing back Lilligren. Yeah. The, wh- you lost what, Bertuzzi. What I don't like here, well, no surprise there, the money. Like all these contracts that Tree Living signed, not one of them was over $5 million. So he kept all the AAVs down, but like Tanev five point for 4.5, six years, he'll play three of those years, maybe four at max, whatever, Robita Island, a buyout, who knows, who knows. Four years for Ekman Larson. I don't like that. I yeah. do not like that at all. Like Tree Living said, basically to get the player at that money, he had to go, with the term i don't four years for this guy man like i mean not sure how that's going to play out like i don't even know how if he's going to make it through year one like is this klingberg 2.0 like he's coming in to help well, the power play he's coming it can't, in to- it can't be klingberg 2.0 because you signed klingberg to a one-year deal yeah so you yeah. Could, it was pretty easy to get out from under the klingberg deal yeah this will be a lot like, like you say this is it happens every year in free agent uh, free agency day they they hand out contracts like this that come back to haunt the team this might be one that comes back to haunt the leaves it could so i don't know like it's not a crazy dollar amount but four years i don't love it stolars two years 2.5 hack and paw two 1.5 for two years but they don't know what's going on with that guy like now i'm no. hearing it's all up in the air with his knee and all that so don't really know um and then murray is a third stringer and then you go to your own guys so murray or sorry uh domi was the first to sign w- at 3.75 i guess okay so you give him a bit of a raise although he didn't like his point production wasn't crazy i think he had like nine goals like i, I don't know no I but guess- he did at the end of the year when he started playing with matthews yep and the chemistry that they had i mean to have that in your back pocket you already know, right? You already know that if someone gets hurt or if he needs to play on the top line, he can do it. Yeah. Okay. Fair. No, I don't. I don't hate. It. So four year deal there, three point seven five. Yeah. Obviously, I don't. And he hate wants that. to be here. Yeah. I like having sure. guys that want to be in Toronto. Yeah. I, I did, big time wants to be here. He put out the Wolf Wall Street video. Yeah, I'm not see. fucking leaving. So like, yeah. No, I. I, I he had his face on DiCaprio's face. Yeah, too. I know. It was awesome, man. Um, no, yeah. I want guys that want to be here on a. First guy that's ever taken a little bit less. So he cut it. He could have got more if he went to free agency. One hundred percent. Maybe he never has he before. But yeah, maybe. no, I think he probably could have got. He could have got four. I bet. Like yeah. you look at some of the guys that signed. Like fuck, there man. was and some. He, there was some crazy con. It was the year of the defensemen. Defensemen were just getting paid left, right, center this this year. Oh, it was wild. Labushkin ended up going to Dallas for three point two five or three point five for four years or whatever. Like that's a little, I would have liked to keep him. And same with Edmondson. Edmondson went to LA, I think four years, like 4.8 or something like that. 4.5, same money as Tanev basically. Like I would have liked to have yeah. kept Edmondson, but not at that amount of money. No, but you can't. Going into the guys. So Domi 3.75 and then going to the, now I don't like these next two contracts. I don't like them. 
Lilligren at three million. What you jump from one point four to three million dollars? Okay, you want to sign Lily? I don't mind, but give him the same. What the fuck? Give him the same money. And Joseph Wall, who hasn't even played forty games in the league, goes from league minimum entry level contract to three point six. Excuse me, what? Stolars has been around for ten fucking years, and he just got two point five million dollars. Wall deserves to be getting three point six. What? And his his. Wall still has another year before that contract kicks. That's in. true, you, and you could have waited a little bit. What What do you do? Like, what are they projecting they, here? They that, must know something we don't know. No, like, no. They how might, could they? I don't know. They might. Maybe their doctors have some special drug where he won't get hurt. They are so high on this guy that they paid him when they didn't have to. If it works out, if he plays forty to fifty games, wins a couple rounds in the playoffs, becomes a stud goalie. I mean, that's a great contract. But if he has what he's done every year, he blows something and he's out for a majority of the regular season and can't play in the playoffs, it's a dud. It's a he should have, he, he should have, they misread that first round series. He should have been playing earlier in that. He should have been playing more down the stretch well, of the regular finished, season. He wouldn't have finished the series anyway. No, I know, but they might not, it might not have went to seven games if Wall fucking plays and yeah. he starts the season or starts the series anyway no i was where i was going what i was going to say was yeah he played great in games five and six and then he can't play in game seven because he fucking throws his back out and then we're gonna sign this guy to three point i like joseph wall i think he's got a bright future if he can stay healthy this isn't a knock on joseph wall this is on the fucking management team what are you doing giving this kid 3.6 million dollars get him for two Two yeah. million extension, two point five million. They're looking at it like it's going to be a steal because it's what a three year deal app. So the next four years they've got him. So they're looking at like, oh, it's gonna he's going to be so good next year. The next three years at three point six is just going to be an absolute steal. That, yeah, that, okay. That's the bet. That has to be the bet that they're making. And like he's older too, right? He's not. He's not young really anymore. I just don't see how a guy that has done played not a lot of games. Not a lot of history That's other than saying. injuries. Why do you need to jump to 3.6? Why? You don't. And that's what I'm saying. They must know same, same with Lilligren. Why? Why three? Why? Lilligren could have went to arbitration. And the only thing I can think of is. If he goes to arbitrate, if Lilligren goes to arbitration, this is what I'm thinking. Then maybe they thought he might get paid more than the number that they gave him. So I think they just tried to avoid arbitration. That's okay. the only reason I can think that they gave him that contract. But I agree with you. It's a little rich for me. It's a little long and a little rich. I thought they were just going to walk away from Lilligren. You couldn't. Why not just trade the guy? Like, trade him. Get, get a different look back there. So now four of the same piece. Okay, you add Ekman Larson. You add Tanup. Obviously, I like the Tanup deal. Like, Great. He's he's injury prone too. So and Ekman Larson prior to last season has a history of kind of like uh what well, how would you say just kind of not really being engaged, I guess is how I would say in a lot of games. Talented yeah. player, Ekman Larson, but you know, maybe under Barube that can be changed and we'll see. A lot's riding on Barube here because he had a good year last year. Great year. For sure, 100%. He carried the load there when Ekblad and a couple guys were um, out of the lineup. And if you can carry the load, that's a good thing, in my opinion. So, Especially loads that big. Big, huge. Those Cougar are big load. loads to fill. Loads for huge Cougar loads. Yeah. Massive, massive. So, uh, and, and he, he was good. He, and he was, he was good in the playoffs. So we'll see. He was really good in the playoffs. But for me, just all of these things combined here, too many question marks. Too many question marks. Way too many. In net, we don't know what the fuck's going to happen. The back end, yeah, sure. Tanev helps to play with Riley. And then what? Your other pairs, McCabe and Benoit and the two Swedes, Ekman Larson and Lilligren. And we don't know what's up with the big the big giant, Hackenpah. He's yeah, got to be the seventh D right now. Yeah. I, like, are those your pairs or no? Yeah, those are the pairs. But at the same time, I'm not really worried about it. Like, in the playoffs, it's not like Boston was just hemming them in their own end and they couldn't get out or whatever. They couldn't fucking score. Right. So what they, they had do? No address, problem handling they, like their defense they, had no problem handling the Bruins. What they do to address that? That's what I mean. Like on the uh, on the left wing, they have pretty much nobody now that Bertuzzi's gone, 
and you're going to rely on the same guys to score in the big games that haven't done it. Like I was expecting one, at least one forward, like a, something to mix it up a bit and nothing. So it's like, okay, yeah, the defense got better. But in my mind, I don't think the defense was the problem and hasn't been the problem. The problem is come playoff time, they're fucking big boys can't score. Look, man, going back 100%, 100%, going back to the end of season press conference, it just all looks like <laughs> yeah. total bullshit. Like, what were they, what the, like, Keith well, they Pally's saw up, things. Hey, they saw things. Oh, yeah. Their like, eyes were open. Oh, yeah. Keith Pelly's up there talking about good isn't good enough anymore. And Shani's saying we're open to everything. And Tree's saying we're open to everything and whatever. This is before they even hired Ruby. Okay. So yeah. they make a coaching change. So that is a significant thing. So we'll see. So, but it all looks to me like the Mitch Marner thing that I was so jacked for like i just wanted a different like i don't want to see it again i don't want to see it again like i don't think you can turn i don't think craig brewery can turn pussy cats into tigers i don't see it happening no i just don't see it man i hope i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong but i'm giving up on the mitch thing chad i'm giving up because it's not happening you're giving it's up not- on the fact that he's gonna get moved oh 100 percent. yeah it's not happening, man. There's no fucking, there's no, there's been zero talk about it. Not even a, there's been a ton of talk about it, but it's all hyperbole. There's no actual inside knowledge of like what's going on there. I, I don't even know if they've asked him about it. If he'd be willing to waive all this. I'm under the conclusion, the comments Barube's made about, I'm looking forward to coaching him. I'm under the impression the band's coming back again, nine straight years now. And they're going to give it a look under Barube. And then thank fucking God that two of these guys are free agents next summer and they can walk away from these fuckers if they want to. Thank yeah, that's, God. Yeah, th- that's probably that's probably what they're planning on. I mean, I heard that Marner gave a list of four teams. Somebody reported that. I don't and it's know, like, man. but I mean, if you're only dealing with so many teams, you're probably not going to get the good value that you want back for Mitch Marner. But I don't even think that's an accurate statement. I don't think he wants to leave. I don't think he wants to leave. I don't think leave. he wants to leave either, but I think he's willing to like, you know, he's open to see what what is out there as long as it's somewhere he wants to go. Well, I hope he's And apparently gonna, he only wants to go to a couple places. He's going to see what's out there because if I'm the management team, I'm, I don't care what, okay, barring major playoff success, and including like he, he being a key component in it, barring that I'm walking this guy right to fucking free agency. Go see what's out there for you, Mitch. Go fucking find yeah. out. Have fun. If you can get a great number, see you later. If not, maybe there'll be an extension on the table for you from us, but it'll be at our fucking terms and our dollar amount and no trade clause or not a no trade clause. And if you want to be a leaf so bad, then you fucking take that deal. If not, See you later. And they better do with fucking Tavares what Tampa Bay just did with fucking Stamkos. Thanks, but no thanks, John. Know, or here, that crazy? Or here's the dollar. Here's the dollar amount. Tavares has been here back. six years. Stamkos was there sixteen. Two he fucking their cups own in a row. Draft pick. Two, Two cups. cups in a row. Like how many fifty goal seasons? Just he wore that Tampa Bay Lightning jersey. Scored forty last year. Yeah, uh, that he. Yeah, he has been. Head and shoulders better than Tavares has been, and they're like two, two cups here's, in a row, and then two three first million round, bucks, two here's first three million round, bucks, two first round exits in a row, and look, and they decide to say no thanks to the to their captain yeah. who just won them recently within the last five years two Stanley Cups. That is cutthroat. I what know, they, but what here they do, what they do around here in Hogtown. Uh-huh. Well, here they're reporting like about taking the C away from Tavares and giving Uh, it to Austin. And people are like, Oh, I don't know if you can do that and stuff. Meanwhile, they're fucking kicking their captain out of the city after he brought them multiple cups, multiple finals, just an incredible career. I think he he still has game left. Oh, he's got game left. I think he just felt slighted by the offer. And he's just like, I can't take that. Like I, there's no part of me that thinks he wanted to leave. I think he just he would have taken a little. Like he would have stayed there for less than he signed in Nashville, but not, not what they were offering. What, what were they offering? Three, three is what I heard. Yeah, three that's million. Just, that's too small. But I'll tell you look, what. Look at look around the league at who got three million on free agency day. Yep. 
Yeah. And tell me if Steven Samkos isn't better than nine out of 10 of all those guys. Okay. But if the offer for JT next summer is more than three, I'm not going to like the deal. Cause guess what else you got to do next summer? You got to give worse. He's worse than Stamkos. I know. So like, it's th- like the JT, you're going down to three. If you want to stay, sorry, that's it. Next summer. If you want McCabe to stick around, you're going to have to re extend McCabe. Matthew Nyes is going to need a new fucking contract. So all of a sudden that $11 million, little smaller and a little smaller. If yeah. they start, you know what I mean? Like you addition it out to a couple million more for McCabe, a couple million for Nyes. All of a sudden, if JT does come back for three, like it goes quick, right? Like it goes yeah. quick. So I don't know. I don't know what they've ever like since God, I can't remember the last time, like even in the Brian Burke days, Dave Nonis, before Shanahan, like going back, I don't remember the last time the Leafs had like a cutthroat person in charge. Like maybe I guess you go back to the 90s a little bit, like Cliff Fletcher, he he'd make trades, but no, nothing like that. Nothing Quinn, like that. Quinn, Quinn, kind Quinn a of, little bit, but, but like in the whole Shanahan era, everybody's uh, got their contracts. Nobody's taking a pay cut. Nobody's won shit. And to see what Tampa did, what Vegas does, what Florida did, we just boom, like a little bit of no success. Done. We're done. Yeah, just a little bit. Nine, just eight a little years. Bit. It's crazy. And that's what pisses me off too. So like going back to that press conference, like, and hearing what Shani said and like, so it was just, I think he just was kind of reading the market at the time, but he's clearly was just fucking lying or like, I like blatantly, I don't, I don't think any part of Shani ever really wanted to change it. And I guess he's just thinking, so like, okay, does it make sense they, to you? I, I think you're right. You said it five minutes ago. They think beefing up the defense and adding a new coach is, is enough change. And we're saying we've seen this song and dance a thousand times it's not going to work just because Barube is sitting on the bench or behind the bench and you know maybe he's got some different ideas for mitch mitch has still got to be the guy to go out on the ice and execute it and i just can't see a small speedy forward skilled forward in that fucking stanley cup can, final against yeah, whoever uh getting I the job see done winning around Okay, I can see sure. them like playing Boston again and winning that game seven, but you're right. I cannot see these guys going four rounds. No way. They'll no, get hurt. No way. They'll they'll bow out at some point. Yeah. Anyway. So I, I don't I don't think these moves are enough personally. And no. uh I just want to see but them get do a you little like do you like the fact that it, it is a different direction? Like this defense is fucking huge now. Like, yeah, do you, do you like going down that road? Where it's it's big, it's mean, it's size. I still would like to see more. Like, I mean, I would have no. I don't. If McCabe and Benoit were my third pair, I'd be like, okay. And then that's a I really would, good third pair. Yeah. And then you got Lar- Larson, Ekman, Larson there. But like, I would try to move Lilligren for another guy like Tan, a Tanev light type person. Right. Another maybe t- a younger Tanev. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, because. Tanev will probably get injured at some point this season. He always does. And then who's yeah. playing? Then who's going to play? Who's playing? I will say this though. Tanev is the first guy we've had in as long as I can remember. That is an actual like he is the cream of the crop of defensive defensemen. hundred percent. Like we've had stay at home guys like Ron Hainsey, Labushkin, yeah. guys like that. This no. is the he is the king of stay at home defense. Oh, he's such a he's such a throwback man. Yeah. Old school. There's old school. He's just like Luke Shen and all those guys we've had that are good. He's the yeah. best at it. Yeah. No. So it sure. will be good. Him and Riley will work good together. Yeah, I think so too. So like, yeah, like there's some positive things there. Like I don't hate the signings necessarily. I just hate that the core five. Oh same guys are going to be there and it's all going to ride on them. Anyways, is Chris Tanev going to fucking take you all the way to the Stanley no. Cup final? No. Although he, he almost did with the stars last year. He did play pretty incredible with Dallas until he got hurt in the Edmonton series. But, yeah. uh, I mean, Star, stars couldn't score. No. Well, like I, I don't know. Like, I just, I think it's going to be like, yeah, where are the goals going to come from again? And, you know, they're asking a lot from Nyes and McMahon to take steps. And, uh, who knows Robertson, like yeah. what's the deal here? All of a sudden little Mickey wants out now tree living is basically saying, yo, hold chill. Hold cool your jets, brother. Well, he's an RFA. So 
you might have more of a, a an opportunity here under a new coach. And and the you, fact that like there's nobody on the left side to play. I know. What like you, there's what would nobody, you do? There's nobody who can pop the puck in the net outside what would you, the eyes. What would you would you try to facilitate a trade there, or you just think there's too no. much offense from Robertson that you got to get him on the team somehow and playing regularly? Well, that's a, he's an RFA, so he doesn't yeah. really have a ton of power. He can be like, no. "I'm not going to sign," and you're like, "Great, well, you're not going to play." And eventually, he'll sign. I would just sell him. I'd be like, "Look, there's a spot for you. All you got to do is be better than Easton Cowan or Minton." something like that you know and you'll have a spot on this team like win over barube talk to barube yeah. what do you got to do i if i were him wouldn't you be happy to have a new coach because it seemed like whatever he did keith yeah, didn't course. want him in the lineup of course so I, slate. I wouldn't ask for a trade at this time i'd play out my last year yeah no i i agree i think it's an odd time to ask for a trade but i guess whatever he's just letting them know what, what where his head's at and i don't blame him i guess because every, he did score every time he was in and then they would fucking take him out it would piss me off too Next but, to Ryan, next to Ryan Reeves, he played the lowest amount of minutes as a Leaf last year. Good, pretty good production for that. But he, yeah, he was like top seven in production. Pretty crazy, man. So yeah, he scored I, all the time, for sure. So for me, like, look, the bottom line is, I want to see a fucking trade. I want to see a trade. All tree living has done a big trade. Sign some of his own guys. Resign some of his yeah. own guys. And bringing guys on July 1st. What's up with that? Not made a deal. Why the reluctancy to make a fucking deal? Whether it's Camp, Lilligren, Yarncroc, somebody bigger like a Mitch, like a JT. Well, Why no fucking trades? Why can't you trade anybody? Oh, maybe. I, oh, sorry. I think they have it no out. movement. Clause. Yeah, maybe it's because they all have no fucking trade clauses yeah. in their contracts. And oh, really, if you fuck. look back at it, like Tree Living's made some trades or whatever, but Tree Living loves to build defense. Like a lot of his big trades revolve around defense, yeah. except when he was pushed into the, into a corner on the Kachuk trade or whatever. Yeah. But he's yeah. never been known to build really good offensive teams. Yeah. So maybe he's just like, well, fuck, these guys can score, so I'm hanging on to them. Like, don't don't you think it would have been not, like okay, Tanev is great. Ekman Larson, I don't have a problem with. I don't like the term, whatever. We'll see um, the length of it. But, like, yeah. don't but you think? Take that out of it. Okay. The defense they, the defense right now is better than it was one year ago from today. Okay, from today. But, like, Labushkin Edmondson, would you not right. like to see? It would have been nice well, to have. We'll, we'll see when the trade deadline comes. But after, after July 1st last year, yeah. when you had Klingberg, yeah, no, this, no. this is a lot better. Yeah, for sure. Um, but but, the, would, would, but would you're you not, not better up front. No, you're not. Like, would you not like to have just seen True Living kind of like, I don't know, try to facilitate a little more here? Like, we talked off the top about how huge hard on for Tanev. That was the number one priority. He's like, I got to get my boy Chris Tanev in here. That's it. Um, and then after yeah. that, he kind of just like. Everything he's wanted has just been an old Calgary flame. <laughs> That's basically it. Like he, we had fuck, we had Kyle Dubas who if you wore a Sue Greyhound jersey, you were coming to the Leafs. Now we got fucking hey, if you were a flame in my day with the Flames, yeah. You come if, if if Calgary would actually deal with Toronto, we'd probably have Markstrom on the team. Oh, and yeah. Tanov would have come last year before he went to Dallas. 100 percent man. If they could have got Zadora, if like I'm sure they wanted Zadora off too. That money, they the didn't money, have that the money, money, the money, the money. But what you know, like I just think there's other things out there that the Leafs could have facilitated if they would have just did a few different tweak a few things, like yeah, try to trade Lilligren, or maybe you just don't fucking offer Lilligren the or, money. You trade Yarn Croc, something like that. You, yes, I was just gonna say that. What if you got a little more, like a little more edgy, and you were like, you know what, like okay, they have no movement clause, the big four, but let's fucking dump David Camp's money. Let's dump Yarn yeah. Crocs money. Let's, like, let's let's buy out Ryan Reeves. There let's you go. Fucking, like let's get aggressive on something, this. Just something, something. Like free up another yeah. five or six million and let's, do let's something do this, else. And maybe we'll go get Zadorov. Or or Roy or whoever. Like there's right. other guys there, right? Just so do so or just try to shake it up. Be like, okay, if we're stuck with these guys, then let's revamp the entire forward lineup around them. You know, let's not be afraid to trade anyone outside of Nyes. The forward it's, group is the exact same, only slightly worse. So it's, but okay. So, well, basically, so 
I don't, they're out of money. So unless they make a trade, like that's what I mean. You could dump David camp and yarn crock. Like you can make money. You yeah. can make up some money on this roster, yep. but again, they're, they love these players. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe tree living's like, well, I signed camp to that contract, so I can't really get rid of them, but it's a terrible, you can't be paying your fourth line that much money for four years. No way. No way, man. Um, I think it's crazy, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it is what it is at this point. I would have liked to have seen a little more. I guess they will be counting on like Cowan and Frazier Minton are going to have every chance to make this team now. There's no doubt about it. There, there's a few, yeah, there's especially Cowan. There's a few open spots on the wing. Big time. So we'll see if those guys can push. And if they're ready and if they can push, I don't mind that. I don't like, I don't mind guys coming in like on the cheap that can contribute. I don't mind that at all. Um, they're both good, smart, young hockey players, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. But I, again, I just don't see the makeup of how it sits today on the 3rd of July when we re were recording this. I don't see the least a serious contender in the Eastern Conference. New Jersey got better. Florida got worse. But they're still they're for, they lost a few defensemen, but their forward group remained intact for the most part. So Tampa Bay, I don't know. Like I mean, they're they'll still be in the mix. Yeah. And Boston's Boston. I like, look at it. You look at it this way: if you weren't if and everybody listening watching, like take yourself out of your Leaf fan shoes, and let's say you cheer for any other team, would you be afraid of facing this Leafs team in the playoffs? I wouldn't. No. Like, yeah, they have no. Austin Matthews, great goal scorer, and Nylander and Marner are good players or whatever. But uh, top to bottom, I wouldn't be afraid to face the Leafs. How, why, how, how, you would bring on the – bring. Yeah. you would want to play the Leafs. They couple, have nothing but playoff failure for eight straight years. There's no success, zero. But, I mean, after this after this free agency signings, bringing it like toughening up the defense or whatever, no, like, I, if I'm a fan of another team, I'm still – I'm not scared of Toronto. No, of course, because your no defense way. got a little bigger. No way. And just because we'll, okay. your D's a little bigger, hey, I'm not afraid of it. Don't have a problem with the D being a little bigger. But hey, we'll see. We'll wait and we'll, so we'll start wrapping this puppy up here. I think we said what we needed to say or wanted to say. Basically, for me, it's a don't love it, don't hate it. I think there's some good things. There's some yes. things to build on and go in the right direction, but too much of it is still the same for me ultimately. That's how I feel. And unfortunately, I do not think I well, I've given up. I've given up on the try the Marner thing. I think it's 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 over. I I we will not see a Mitch Marner trade this summer. And we'll see what happens at the, I think Mitch will be on the team this season and we'll see how it plays out at yep. the end of next season. Never so say never. Baru, well, I don't I I I've given up on it. I've given okay. up on it. And we'll I think I think they're just gonna see how Barube if if one last time, as insane as that fucking sounds. Okay, new coach, last last ditch, uh, last ditch effort here. Can this new guy get anything more out of these players before we finally decide to go in a different direction? That's where I ultimately yeah. think it lands, Chad. Yeah, and and, and it, as crazy as it sounds to do that, they their hands are tied with the no movement clause. But like you said, at the end of this season, Marner's coming off the books and Tavares is coming off the books. What I'm afraid of, and I said this last podcast, is that Marner will come out of the gates hot as fuck. He'll score like crazy. He'll be putting up points like crazy. And by Christmas, the Leafs will shit their pants and give him a huge contract extension. No, I hope I hope that is not what happens at all. Uh, yeah, I don't think that would happen with Tavares, no matter what. I don't no. think he's coming out of the gates hot at all. But I can do you not see it with Marner, just like no, Matthew, I don't. just like not, Nylander, like not not this time around because Tree wanted those other two, but I'm not convinced that he wants Mitch. I think he wants to e evaluate this whole if fucking Mitch thing. comes out and he's leading the NHL in scoring. He's ahead of Connor McDavid. He's just like. He's on pace for 140 points or something crazy like that. You don't think that this Leafs team, knowing it's possible. what you know, it's possible. Would do it like, personally. We're going to extend them. Like I would. I, they it, always extend at the worst time. Yeah, it's very possible. But I think Tree Living, he just he got to be smarter this time. And if that is the case, he's got to be like, 
I'm not getting fooled. Not George Bush here. You fool me once, you fool me twice, whatever. Old saying. Fool me, fool me the second time. A fool don't get fooled again. So enough. Now, of getting, watch, now watch this drive. Enough of getting fooled here, right? Like, I just hope that's not the case. I know what you're saying. Very leafy thing to do that. I hope this time, if that is the case, and, and Mitch is killing it, they just, they, they, no, ride it they, out. They ride have it the out. balls to be like, no. No. No, we're going to wait. Because wait. I don't care if Mitch has 140 points. If Mitch no. plays like shit in the playoffs, that's what I'm going to talk about. Like, if I am going to extend him, we're going to, that's, you know, that's going to play into the picture. None of this. Wow. This, this guy's on a tear. We got to get him signed. Anyway. hundred percent. Anything else? No, man. This will be the last, like, I just, my gut feeling here is this. We, the captaincy quickly. What do you think? I, I'll, I'll tell you right now. I don't believe. I think Matthews should be the captain. Matthews should be the captain. I think he's the legitimate is looked at already as the captain best player on the team by a mile but i think just it's the last year of jt's deal i don't think this is when you do it i think that at the end of next season no matter what happens whether jt stays and takes a layer uh, a lower cap hit yeah i think next summer is when you do it i think it does happen but i think it's next summer not this summer what do you think uh, well, I think having Barube come in might be a good time to do it. Like if Barube really wants to set the tone, he could come in and be like, you know, you're not our captain. Yeah. But he's never played for him. Like, I think, it matter. I think if you're going to evaluate the thing, the whole thing, you might as well evaluate the whole thing. Right. Like John's not a bad guy. Aren't you I, looking for, aren't you looking for any, anything? I know it's stupid. Not, an, not anymore. Not team. anymore. I'm not. Are you looking for like any sort of change that no. this team could do? No, you I, just want to ride it out. I don't want to, but I've given up. I've given up on next season already. I've get, I'm giving up on it. Tampa look- Bay just kicked their captain to the curb and you won't walk to John Tavares and be like, would you rather be an assistant and let Matthews have the seat, like start a new era? I will do. I will have that conversation next summer. That's when. That's when I personally would do it. I would just if you're riding it. If you're riding everything else out, then why? Why not just fucking ride that out too? Yeah, that's true. Like for me, they could have John. Like they could just say thanks, but no thanks to John next year, and not even offer him a fucking uh, contract. And then that's the end of that. And you're gonna have a new captain no matter what. So true. I'm pushing it down the road until next summer because. To me, it looks like that's when the big things are going to happen. We're going to play this year, and we're going to see what happens under Barube. See what Barube can get out of these guys. But ultimately, now I'm looking forward to next off season because that's when they can finally make these moves without having to deal with, with no twenty million in dollars in cap space. If they want it, they all, they can just say thanks, but no thanks to the both of them. So, and I'm not opposed to that. I know at least the fans might think I'm crazy, but. I don't know. We'll see. It should still be an interesting year to see how these guys play under Barube and if he can get them to play a different style and specifically a different style in the playoffs. So we'll we'll see what happens. Like yeah. it's not a oh, wait. The thing, the thing about yeah, the thing I like about Barube is that he does not he won't give a shit about about padding your stats. Oh no. You know what I mean? Like no. It, it, as soon as April, even before that, as soon as like March after the trade deadline, he, he's going to get into playoff mode and he ain't going to give a shit about scoring 60 goals. And do, he's not going to care. No, I think Keith kind of babied them in that way. He let them get their, you know, their personal goals. Brube won't do that. So it'll be nice to see, but we'll see how it translates when they're in game seven of the playoffs again. We'll see. But yeah, man, I think that's probably it for us here for now. Um, We'll take a nice little break away unless there's any like something serious happens, unless there's one of the top guys traded or something serious goes down that needs to be talked about. We'll probably be back in September. Like, I mean, maybe we'll pop on once in a while to just for some something, give a little update, but I don't, I don't, I think it's going to be real quiet. Real quiet. Do you not think? I don't think he's gonna tree's gonna do much going forward here. For no, me. I don't think so. I think I think this is kind of it. Yep. Unless he might sign a forward here and there, like a depth guy, a third or fourth liner. But unless uh a trade magically transpires that Mitch is on board with, this is it. That would be something, wouldn't it? Though, man. Well, we will be here if that oh happens. yes, absolutely, absolutely. But if not. 
we're gonna go get drunk uh and sit by the lake yep and you should all do the same yeah be, so be the, safe out there though listen uh for the tip in maple leafs podcast it's been an awesome year here for the tip in maple leafs podcast a year ago we were with another company doing the podcast and before this season started just they said no thanks so we jacked up all our old accounts got them back on decided to do bring the tip in maple leafs podcast we have grown huge this year probably bigger than any other year and we just want to thank everyone for that have a great summer enjoy a few beers enjoy the lake enjoy your vacation enjoy the nice weather we'll be back in september you can follow us on social media at the tip in maple leafs podcast on facebook instagram and youtube on tiktok at tip in podcast on twitter at tip in pod and until next uh I guess until training camp, I'm Chad. I'm Dale. We will. Yeah, unless there's any breaking news, like a Mitch Marner trade or a Matt Murray groin pull. <laughs> we'll see you guys next September at training camp for what should be a very interesting 2024-2025 Toronto Maple Leaf season. Thanks for watching all year, guys. Thanks for listening. Like this video on YouTube and please subscribe to our YouTube channel from Chad and myself. Come on, Tree. Make a trade, would you? Would you just make a freaking trade? Come on, Tree. Yeah. Do it. Go down to Boston Pizza. Have a few schooners and pick up the fucking phone, man. That's right. Come on, Tree. Anyway, have a great summer, guys. We'll catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.